You published a study in 2024 which found that exposure to di diesel exhaust gas yes. was associated with increased fat mass, yeah. enlarged fat cells, insulin resistance, and increased levels of inflammation. And that was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. Yeah, that was one of the studies I just was referring to with regards to my colleague Paul Reynolds. Paul and I, we that was one of the papers we published looking at these inhaled particulates. The reason I was interested in this field of study in the first place was just to continue to kill the caloric model of obesity. So our, and this touches on an earlier part of the conversation. Overwhelmingly, if you ask someone, why do we get fat? Well, because you eat more calories than you burn. Why do you lose fat? Because you eat fewer calories. And I have long just been frustrated by how naive that view is. Yes, energy matters, but again, the fat cell must be told what to do with the energy that it has. That, of course, points an obvious finger at insulin, which is the strongest of all signals. But what we found in that study is that even something as seemingly unrelated as diesel exhaust particles, mind you, we did not do this study in humans. Full disclosure, we did the study in animals where we could perfectly control how much diesel exhaust they're getting. Um, so we have this mechanism through in Paul's lab where you can aerosolize these particulates and know exactly how much the animal's breathing. And then at the end of the study, after even though they ate the exact same amount of food, the animals that were exposed to the diesel exhaust particulates had fatter fat cells and more insulin resistance than the animals that had just been breathing normal room air. So what we're breathing in theoretically could then be determining how fat we're getting. Uh, yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah, yeah, this evidence would suggest that it goes beyond theory. So our evidence would state conclusively that yes, what you breathe does matter. Then theoretically, we would say, well, how much does that apply to humans? That is where it would get into the realm of theoretical. But the evidence certainly suggests, yes, the very air we breathe matters. And you see this at a population level. Look in areas where there are, now there are confounding variables here. Here I am invoking correlational research and I was just criticizing it a moment ago with regards to longevity. But you look in areas where they have higher pollution levels, where the particulates are higher in the atmosphere, and those same areas are always fatter and more diabetic. Interesting. But, but of course, that's correlational, so it's hard exactly. to... Exactly. Yes, thank yeah. you for pointing it out. And, and, but again, as much as you and I are citing the problem with the correlational study there, we need to always cite the problem with correlational studies when it comes to informing nutrition policy. Like, don't eat eggs because they cause diabetes. But when you actually look at the studies, you find nothing of the sort. What about other sort of environmental toxins and their impact on insulin resistance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are the ones that you inhale. A, a handful of inhaled particulates will matter. We have shown in my lab alone with my, with my collaborators, diesel exhaust will do it, cigarette smoke will do it, and more. We have a funded grant right now to look at the effects of vaping. So apparently stuff we breathe will matter. To some unknown degree, things that we drink will that are non-caloric. So there can be like people have heard of the microplastics. Microplastics are things that you can't, they're so small that you drink them and they will absorb through the intestine and get into the bloodstream. For reasons that are unknown to me at the moment, one of the sites where those microparticles will go is the fat cells. And once there, they will directly promote the growth of the fat cells. So that's actual microscopic segments of plastic. But separate from that are molecules that can come from plastics and soaps and detergents like BPA or diethylstilbestrol, DES. That's actually an estrogen mimetic, kind of what we referred to earlier with regards to other endocrine disruptors. But there are other chemicals that a person can drink um, or inhale, like I mentioned earlier, but that will directly impact the growth of fat cells or promote to tell, mimic what insulin wanted to do, which is tell the fat cell to grow.